Well, book, booktube, it's time to make a video. I am uh, making a cup of tea. It's too late to make coffee. You know, if you make coffee tonight, then it sits all night. It doesn't taste fresh in the morning. So, sometimes in the evenings, I have a cup of tea. I, you know, for many, many years, I didn't drink coffee. I drank tea. Uh, I don't know, I started drinking coffee, I think, when I stopped, stopped working in 2007. I just started drinking coffee. Well, we start, uh, we get, we would buy our coffee beans down the street. Sapacchio coffee, it's Mexican coffee beans, black and tan. We've been doing that for a long time. I just go down the street now and get five pounds of beans. That usually lasts us three or four weeks. And uh, we grind them up. My wife loves coffee. So, but it's like it's too late for coffee. So I like I like uh, English, no Irish breakfast tea. I think I read somewhere that Irish breakfast tea is the strongest tea. Maybe that's why I got into it. So yeah, so I thought I'd make a video since. Uh, like I said, I'm alone. I got a call last night from Carol from Phoenix, Arizona. Jack Stewart was born there in Arizona time, 7.31 in, at night. So my daughter's doing fine. Jack's doing fine. Andy's doing fine. Carol's doing fine. And our granddaughters, Louisa and Margaret, are doing fine. Carol called late this afternoon. I was dozing when she called. I was really tired and I was fell asleep in the easy chair. So everybody's doing fine. I'm doing fine. Uh, I took a chill pill this morning. And uh, yeah, this is where I'm making video. I went to Grand Haven, which is north of us. They have a, a, a public library and in the lower basement they have a used bookstore called Cheap Stacks. And the weather was really okay today. The roads were clear, the, it was gray, but uh, I felt, I like Cheap Stacks because books are only a quarter paperback and hardbacks are only 50 cents. And I always find something. And this is what I found today at Cheap Stacks, all for $6. First of all, I wanted to show my, uh, I didn't get these at Cheap Stacks. This is my Jonathan Franzen collection. The reason why I got this is because I I found today at Cheap Stacks a hardback edition of this novel by Jonathan Franzen, 20, The Twenty Seventh City. This is one of his earlier earlier novels that came out first in 1988. Here in the hardback edition, you can see how young he is when he is. This is a hardback edition. And, you know, I have like a hardback edition of his novel, Strong Motion, and then I have a paperback. This is his newest novel, Purity, which came out in 2015. He did a group of, uh, these are essays, How to Be Alone. He did The Comfort Zone, A Personal History by Jonathan Franzen. Freedom and Correction. So anyway, this is my Jonathan Franz, Franzen collection. So I found a hardback of his earlier novels. So now I have an old paperback. And I have a hardback. So that's him. So, I, you know, I'm a, like I said, I'm a collector. I find an author and I start collecting every edition that I like. So I'll put these over here. Get them out of the way. 
So yeah, so I found those. Well, I found that one. So these are the books I found at Cheap Stack. These were all, everything was half off today. So hardbacks were only 25 cents. I found this at Cheap Stacks in Grand Haven today. A, every man, a, spec, a spectator, a speculator. This is a history of Wall Street in a American life. Uh, reason why I got this, well, for one thing, every day you hear about Wall Street uh, in New York City. And I've always, when I saw this at the Cheap Stacks, I thought, oh, it'd be kind of interesting reading the history of Wall Street. So also, it's a book about New York City. I collect books in New York City. So this is by uh, Stephen, Steve Fraser. Every man a speculator, a history of Wall Street and American life. And then I found this now, uh, it's not a novel, it's, uh, it's like a travel book. It's called The City of Florence, Historical Vistas and Personal S Sightings. This is by R.W.B. Lewis. He wrote a very famous biography in Edith Wharton, and he's written uh, a biographical sketch on the James's family, which is William James, Henry James, Henry and William James' father. I have that in my library. But he, li he lived, uh, it says here, in this deeply personal learned labor of love, R. W. B. Lewis, acclaimed chronicler of such great American cosmopolitans. <coughs> I'm coughing, sorry. Cosmopolitans, as Edith Wharton and Henry James provides a new look at the glories of Florence, the smallish Tuscan city which has been a prime source for modern Western culture, which has also been his second home for the past 50 years. In chapters dense with historical detail and personal reflection, Lewis considers the principal focal points of this much beloved city. So yeah, I collect his books and I didn't know he had written a book on City of Florence and I didn't know that um, his second home was Florence. So I got that. Then I found this biography on, J on John James Annabon, the great uh, engraver of birds. I have a several books. By, I have a biography on James Audubon and some other books. But I never heard of this one. This is by Alice Ford. This came out, this is uh, first came out in oh I don't know what it's, I think it I know it's an older one let me see here. Anyway, I found this uh, for you, for those who watch my videos and read my online diet, Crooked Fingers, know I love birds, and so I got this James Audubon biography. And then I found this novel by somebody I never heard of. It's called, his name is D. M. Thomas. This his novel, The White Hotel. I never heard of him, but. Uh, says here, the White Hotel is an extraordinary, daring colossus of a work in which is seen a startling poetry of violence and redemption. I don't know, had good, I don't know anything about him. It says here, D. M. Thomas was born in Cornwall in eight, 1935. He was educated there in Australia and New College, Oxford, where he gained a first in English. His other novels are The Flute Player, which won some prize, The Birthstone, 1982, uh, Swallow, 1984, Phoenix, 1986, Summit, Memories, Hallucinations. He has published five volumes of verse. I don't know. So, I don't know. It was only, it's only 25 cents. And it, I like the cover. The cover looks kind of cool. And then I found this novel. I uh, last time I was in uh, Grand Haven last last year, I found a novel by this guy. His name is Gregor Van Rusenzor. I bought 
used at a books used bookstore, the mem, mem, memoirs of an anti-Semitist. This is another novel of his. This is Death of My Brother Abel. This is translated by Jokingham No uh, So yeah, I have to I know where this memoirs of an anti-Semitic is downstairs in the lower level. I hope I know where it is. I gotta put these together. So I got that. It says here about this novel, The Death of My Brother Abel. In a Paris hotel room, a man is trying to assemble a novel, The Death of My Brother Abel, from autobiographical notes. It is an astonishing masterpiece, a collage of luminous fragments about his youth before World War II and his experience in Germany during and after the war, a sardonic and passionate set pieces about love, work, sex, and writing, families and nations of dreamlike narrations of his inner longing and outward intentions. Dazzling in its scope, its wit, and narrative power. So I don't know, I look pretty, it's only a quarter. And I have his other novel, Mem Memoirs of an Anti-Semitic. So. And then I found, a, I collect Gary Wills. This is his book. Uh, it's like an American history explaining America, the Federalists. Uh, I have uh, a bunch of his books downstairs in the uh, the lower level. I collect his his books. He is uh, he's kind of like a public intellectual. And then I found this. A memoir by Peggy Goodenham. She's the famous art collector. This is her kind of memoir out of this century, Confessions of an Art Attic. She was an early patron of like Jackson Pollock, a bunch of the New York school painters in the 40s and 50s. She had relationships with some of them. You can see some of the paintings in here. There's a Jackson Pollock painting. And there's paintings here by, that's a Jackson Pollock. You know, surrealism, this is a Sub Sub Salvador Dali. So I, I was really pleased to find this because it, I'm always reading about her when I'm reading about the New York poets and painters in the 40s and the 50s and early 60s. And this is a, a biography of William Cullen Bryant, who was a very famous poet and journalist and uh, he's a very famous 19th century figure. It says here, uh, a tran uh, proclaimed by James Fillmore Cooper to be the author of America William Cullen Bryant, born in 1794 and died in 1878, was one of the 19th century's America's foremost poets and public intellectuals. In this, the first major biography of Bryant in almost 40 years, Gilbert H. Muller reintroduces a quintessential New Yorker who commanded the nation's literary, culture, and urban and political life for more than a half a century. Transplanted Yankee Bryant also ar ar Bryant arrived on the unpaved streets of Manhattan in the early, early 1820s, and he would soon find himself at the locus, locus of the locus of many political and cultural transformations sweeping Manhattan and the nation. The bedrock of Bryant's cultural authority was his reputation as America's first poet. He enthralled a nation and his peers, including Whitman, Poe, po, Longfellow, and Emerson, who praised the excellency of his verse. A literary celebrity for almost 70 years, Bryant served as the editor of the New York Evening Post for five decades. He was a major force behind the establishment of Central Park, the National Academy of Design, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, among others. It goes on and on. So I was really pleased to find that. I always come across him when I'm reading about 19th century America in New York City. And it looks like a really interesting biography. 
And then I found another novel by Jonathan Carroll. I mentioned him. I found his novel the other day, Sleeping in Flame. This is his novel, The Wooden Sea by Jonathan Carroll. And then I found this uh, History of England, Volume 5, England Under the Stuarts. Uh, from 1603 to 1714 by G. M. Tra Travelin, O. M. I have other books by him on the history of England down in the lower level. Then I found this novel by William McPherson. I have his other novel, The Testing of the Current. This is his novel to the Saragossa Sea. Another novel by him. And then I found a biography of this very famous uh, American poet, Archibald McLeish, An American Life by Scott Donaldson. Scott Donaldson, I have his biographies on MS, Ernest Hemingway, Scott Fitzgerald, and John Cheever. I have by him. This uh, Scott Donaldson, he writes, he's written a lot of biographies on American poets and writers. And this is his one, Archibald. McLeish, very famous American poet. And this is a book by Bruce Chadwin. He was a travel writer. He wrote novels. Uh, I wasn't sure if I had this one because I have almost all of his writings. I didn't have this one. I was pleased to find it for a quarter. These are his occasional writings, stories, profiles, and travel logs. This is George Santana. He was a, oh, I have his books downstairs. He wrote about poets. He's, uh, he affected Wallace Stevens, Conrad Alkin, Robert Frost. Uh, he knew Bait, uh, Ezra Pound, you know, Robert Bridges, Robert Lowell. He was very famous. I didn't call him a philosopher. I don't know what you'd actually call him. Uh, it says here, the most famous book is called The, the Last Puritan, which I have down in the lower level. Uh, it says here, says here, I suppose you would say he was a uh, a philosopher. Then I found this big, huge, massive biography on John Steinbeck, The True Adventures of John Steinbeck, a writer by Jackson J. Benson. I have a huge John Steinbeck collection. Uh, so I found this biography. And then I found this uh, biography on Butte Bromel, uh, Ultimate Anna Style. He was a dandy, an English uh, dandy in the, the Regent period. He, uh, I mentioned him when I was reading about the Ferreras, about the Wanderers and Walkers. and I mentioned him in, in previous videos. I was really pleased to find this. I found that. This is by uh, Ian Kelly. And then I found this uh, Jermaine G Gear, the whole woman. She was a, uh, I don't know what you call her, a feminist writer, a feminist intellectual. I collect her books. So those are the things I found today at the uh, Cheap Stacks there in Grand Haven. Got them all for six dollars. Can't go wrong for that. So I'll put these down on the lower level tonight. Stack them up. I, I didn't really get a chance to read today. I was gone. After I w went to Grand Haven, I went to Rosie Mount Natural Area and took a walk down to the Lake Michigan. Came home, cataloged these books in my library thing, wrote in my diary. Day went by. In my diary, I'm on page 137 in my February 2017 diary. 
We're on the 16th, tomorrow's the 17th, and I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I keep reminding myself that Carol is gone until the 3rd of March, so. But I got books to read, I got things to write, I got music to listen to, I can watch the birds, I can make videos, I can drink a cup of tea. So now it's 7 o'clock at night here on a Thursday here in West Michigan. Hoping you're having a good week and until next time, thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments and the questions and until next time, bye.